Maybe you remember last uh, time I began by quoting Richard uh, Foster as saying that spiritual disciplines, the purpose of them was liberation from the uh, stifling slavery of self-interest and fear. Well, that's a good intro to uh, today's devotion, which is about spiritual freedom. I thought it would be a good subject for doing the devotion uh, right after the July the 4th and celebrating the freedom of our country. Uh, so I wanted to share this with you. It, it comes from some thoughts that Henry Nellen shared with a uh, nephew of his uh, in a letter. And uh, he shares from the story of the two men, two disciples, one's named Cleopas, we don't know the other, on the way from uh, Jerusalem to a little town seven miles outside of Jerusalem called Emmaus uh, after Jesus' death. Uh, it begins there. The same day, two of Jesus' followers were walking uh, to the village of Emmaus, seven miles out of Jerusalem, and as they walked along, they were they talked about everything that had happened. Well, what had happened? Uh, well, Jesus, the one who they had uh, thought would be the ultimate freedom fighter, to give them freedom uh, from Rome's domination, uh, had died, and so with him had disintegrated their hopes uh, for that freedom. And so uh, suddenly Jesus himself comes alongside them and joins them and begins talk, walking beside them. But they didn't know who he was because it says God kept them from recognizing. So he says to them, you seem to be in deep discussion about something. What are you so concerned about? They stopped short, uh, sadness written across their faces. And then one, Cleopas, replies, You must be the only one in person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about these things. And Jesus asked, What things? Well, the things about that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They, and then they share with him all that had happened um, and that had so discouraged them. Well, then Jesus says to them, you are such foolish people. You find it so hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scriptures. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the pro by the prophets uh, that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Um, and then he quoted many of from, uh, passages from the writings of Moses and the prophets. Uh, well, by this time they, they, they get close to Emmaus. And so Jesus would have gone on, but they begged him to stay. He went home with them, and as they sat, uh, uh, and as they sat down to eat, he took a small loaf of bread. Uh, he asked God's blessing on it and broke it, and then gave it to them. And the uh, verse 31 of Luke 24 says, "Suddenly, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him." And at that moment, he disappeared. Well, this is where the significant statement by uh, Nowen comes in. He says, what matters here uh, is that the moment Cleopas and his friend recognized Jesus, his bodily presence was no longer required as a condition for their hope. You see, all their hopes, all the disciples, not just these disciples, had rested upon the physical presence of Jesus and sometimes our hopes rest on a lot of physical things but now now that they have recognized that Jesus it was who it was the one who had they put their hope in was had gone through the death yes and the disintegration but he uh, had begun but he had now uh, been resurrected from that then there really was no longer a need and for them or for us to have Jesus' physical presence because we know that the, that the one who we've put our hope in is has gone beyond that um, and he is with us. That gave them the strength to go back to Jerusalem and tell other people, everybody else, that it's not true that it's all over. Uh, he closed by an, the example of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who wrote a book uh, called, or at least a book of his writings, uh, was put together called Letters and Papers from Prison. And he uh, it was one, one like, uh, who even though he was in a prison, a Nazi uh, prison, his life was an example of somebody who knew that he could not be bound 
by anything in this life because he was bound to the one the unbound Christ in heaven and so are you